Hi there, my name is Elgin. I'm the community manager for Mozilla Hubs, and today I'm going to give you a very quick introduction to the platform, and then I'm going to show you how to get started using it. So before I go any further, you might be wondering what is Hubs? Hubs is an open source project by Mozilla, and it's for creating shared virtual spaces in the browser. So if you look above me, you will see <laughs> this is footage from IEEE VR conference that took place in Hubs. And what's really neat about getting together with people in this sort of space is that um, when you're together, you actually can hear each other using spatialized audio. And what that means is that the closer you are to someone, the louder they're gonna sound. And conversely, the farther you are from someone, the quieter they sound. And so what that means is if you get the whole group together and you're having a conversation as a whole, you know, you can, you can all talk with each other. But then if you wanted to break out into sort of side conversations, you can do that super easily just by moving to another part of the room. So it's very similar to getting together with people in, real, in the real world. Um, and it's a very natural way of kind of interacting with other people. Another thing that's really cool about Hubs is that it is a VR experience. So if you've got a VR headset, you can join in in the three-dimensional kind of VR experience. You don't need to download anything. You don't need any software installation. You just have to navigate there using the browser. But if you don't have a VR headset, that's not a problem at all. Um, any device that has a modern web browser on it should be able to get into a Hubs room. So if you've got a mobile phone, it works. Or if you want to use the desktop version, which is what we're looking at um, or what we will be looking at here shortly. The other thing that is really exciting about Hubs, I find, is that it's really easy to share content. So if you look around this room where they're meeting, you'll see that there's images on the walls, there's posters, etc. So it's really, really simple to bring in different media from um, websites or from your computer because this runs in a browser. So um, all you need to do is copy and paste the URL into the room and it should work. Uh, so the different formats that are accepted are PDF files, uh, so you can give presentations, uh, images and video, so both flat as well as 360. Um, you can bring in audio files, 3D models, so the, the format that we support is GLB. Um, and we actually have a connection like within Hubs to Google Poly and to Sketchfab, so you can import content really easily, um, 3D model content that is. Uh, if you wanna make drawings, you can, there's a pen tool. Um, you can create these fun interactive text bubbles, so that's like if you do text chat, you can like make them into objects in the world and then place them around the space, which is great if you're brainstorming. Uh, and you can also share your webcam um, or share the content of your screen using the screen sharing features. So. How do we get started? Got the wrong screen open here. If we go to hubs.mozilla.com, <laughs> you'll have a landing page kind of like this. And at the bottom of the page here, I've got some extra things. These are my favorite rooms because um, I know I want to go back to them a lot. But if you just wanted to create your own room from scratch, you can click create a room. And in no time at all, you will have your own private um, immersive space that you can invite people to join you in. So it'll just take a moment. So here we are. <laughs> this is my perfumed fluffy celebration. That's the default name. You can totally change that. <laughs> so one of the questions we get asked a lot is how long will this website stay up? So you can actually uh, come back to this URL anytime. It's yours. Uh, you can come back um, and invite people in a few weeks or a few months and it'll still, be, it'll still be working. The only situation in which it stops working is if you go to this drop down and select close room <laughs> and then your room will be gone, um, but it will prompt you first. But if you just want to like delete the room entirely, you can you can close it. But for the most part, <laughs> you probably are not going to be doing that. So you can always come back to this URL. It's private to you. No one else has access to it unless you share it with them. So how do you share it? If you want to invite other people to the room, you can click the share button. There is a short code link here, um, which is more or less just a shortened version of the URL, but there's also this hub link code. And that's really handy if you're coming in on a VR headset, because anyone who's tried to type a long URL in a VR headset knows it's a bit of a drag. So this code is a little bit of a shorthand to make that easier. There's also this um, embed code. And so if you wanted to have your hubs room on your own web page, you can embed it. And if you don't want to like sit there and monitor it all the time, you can select notify me when others arrive so that then you'll get pinged if someone stops by. So you don't have to be sitting there and like waiting for someone to join you. You can just like, you know, put that out there and then jump in if you know that someone's in the environment. 
Now, the other question we get asked all the time is what is the capacity of a hubs room? Like how many people can I actually invite in? So this is a little bit, uh, you know, there's not like a solid answer. It's sort of an it depends situation. But we typically for our meetups, we recommend about 24 people. And that's the default number for a hubs room. If you wanted to change it, you can go into this drop down menu and go to room and scene info. Oh, no. Oh not that one, <laughs> go to room settings. Uh, and this is where you can actually um, change the name of the room. You can make it so that people can't create objects inside the room in case you want to disable that for your meeting. Um, but you can also change the number of people that can come in. Now, the reason why we recommend 24 is because we found that's a really nice balance for getting lots of people into the space uh, without having any performance issues for people on low power devices. We found that at about 24 people in the, the room was when people who are on mobile phones might have had some trouble with the audio, like things maybe are cutting in and out a little bit or the frame rate gets really slow. But if you do know that people are going to be coming in on really good network connections on desktop computers or desktop VR rigs, you can maybe push that a little bit bigger. But we typically recommend if you're going to be having many more than 25 people inside of a space that you maybe break it up into two different rooms. Um, and that'll ensure a good performance for everyone. <laughs> Uh, now, what happens if you have a room and you've invited 30 people to come and you've set the cap of 25? People are not going to be barred from joining your room. They're not going to get like a big failure message. In fact, they're going to get a screen really similar to what we're looking at right now. So right now we're in the lobby. So what that means is that I can see everything that's happening in the room. I can hear what's happening and I can even interact with it. Like I can move my viewpoint around, but I'm not actually represented by an avatar in the space. And one of the things that um, eats up a, a lot of bandwidth is actually the microphone input. So when you're in the lobby, you don't have a mic connected yet, but you can interact using text chat. And because you're not using that microphone input, you can actually have a ton more people sitting in the lobby watching and like interacting using text chat. Text chat. And so I don't think you really have to worry too much if you're expecting just a few people more than 25 to your event because um, the rest of the people will be able to actually sit and interact um, and still take part in the experience. They just won't be physically in the room as an avatar. Again, if you wanted to do a much bigger event, breaking it up into smaller room or like multiple rooms is usually the best practice. Now, if I want to go into this space, I can click enter room. If it's your first time in, you'll get prompted for your username and your avatar. <laughs> Uh, it'll ask you for your mic permissions. I'm going to allow that and I'm in. <laughs> so to look around, I can click with my mouse and drag and that lets me look around back and forth. If I want to move, I can use on my keyboard W, A, S, and D to move my avatar. If you prefer, you can also rotate your view using the Q and E keys. And you can teleport using the right mouse button. So you'll see that green line coming up in the middle of my screen. That's going to jump me over to this side. <clears throat> now the controls, if you are on a mobile device, are to look around, you can rotate your phone. <laughs> you can also drag your finger along the top of the phone and that'll work. If you want to move forward or backwards, you can kind of use a pinching motion and that will help you navigate through the space. If you're on a VR headset, uh, it depends a little bit on the device that you're on, but typically it's the joystick controls that let you move and it's one of the buttons that will let you teleport. But I can't say for sure without knowing what headset you're using. There's a few differences. So now I'm in my space. Uh, a few more things in the interface I'll point out. Um, if you wanted to change your avatar, you can go to the drop down menu. If you go set name and avatar, you'll see right now on this pretty cool 3D model that someone uploaded recently, but I can always change to a different one by going to browse avatars. And these are all customizable. If you've got your own GLB file, you can totally upload that. We offer templates for our bone structure on our GitHub page. Um, so if you wanted to customize your avatar, you totally can. Uh, for now, I'm going to be this really cute um, bobblehead. That was com this is a, one of our community members made a tool for customizing these and they're really adorable. Okay, so now that we're in our space, um, if we wanted to create objects, we've got a few different options. We can upload things directly from our desktop. So there's this plus sign um, that lets us open up a file browser so we can find things on our computer. Or you can drag and drop files from your desktop into the room. There is a 128 megabyte maximum file upload size. And when you're bringing things in, just be mindful that if people are gonna be coming from low 
powered devices or maybe slow connections, that the bigger they are, the harder it is for their computer to render. <laughs> So um, we recommend if you're bringing in your own 3D models that you keep the texture size to 1024 10 by 1024 and that you stay to roughly 20,000 triangles. However, that being said, if you know that people are going to be coming from you know, high powered devices, or if you are only bringing in one or two objects and you're not expecting a full 25 person um, capacity in your room, you can probably get away with really pushing that quite a bit. I've, I've brought in models that are quite a bit larger than um, 20,000 triangles, but um, in terms of performance for ensuring that you can bring in multiple things and have lots of people in the space, that's a really good baseline to use. <laughs> you can also bring in things from um, a URL. So here I've got a URL um, for this video. And if I copy and then paste it into my room, it'll load just like that. No problem. And I can make it bigger using the secondary controls. You can open up those secondary controls by using the space bar on your computer. If you're using desktop, if you are on a mobile device, you can use a two finger tap. And if you're on VR, then you will point at the object and press the A button on Quest. I can't say for sure what it is on other headsets, but <laughs> that way you know. So I've got this video running. I can change the audio settings here. Um, so I can turn up the volume, turn down the volume, and that's only for me. So I don't have to worry about turning it down for everyone in the space. Uh, but if I do press pause, it'll pause it for everyone else in the room. There are also some advanced settings for um, volume and movement as well in your user preferences. So if you want to kind of play with that a little bit and customize it for your own um, use, then I totally recommend that. If I press spacebar, I get the secondary set of controls. I can delete objects. I can change the size. I can rotate them, etc. Now, <laughs> this one's the most fun. If you go to the object browser, there's a link to Google Poly, to Sketchfab, to various GIFs and images that you can import into your hubs room. So I'm looking at the Sketchfab tab right now. And if I wanted to bring in a 3D model, I could just find one from this list. So. Um, bring in this Christmas ball and that's going to bring in uh, this model from Sketchfab super, super easily. Now the list that's there is all filtered by um, Creative Commons content. So you'll only see the things that have been tagged for um, public use. And it's also filtered for size. So all of these objects um, we know are within a certain approved size to be able to render um, pretty easily inside of hubs. So if you find that a model that you're looking for isn't in that list, that could be why. Now, once we have these models in our room, if we were to navigate away from the page, they would actually disappear. So that's sort of a built-in feature of hubs that you don't want to get your room super cluttered with objects that you're bringing in to play with. But if you did want something to stay inside of the space, you could hover over the object and press the space bar and you'll see this pin option. Now, once something has been pinned, that means it's going to be frozen in place. And even if I navigate away from the page, it's going to stay there. This is really great if you want to set up a room a little bit in advance and have a few things for people to, to take a look at. And you want to make sure that when you navigate away before the event that they're not going to go anywhere. If you wanted something to be permanently in the room though, what I would recommend doing is actually building it into the scene from scratch. So the scenes in hubs are built using a tool called spoke. Um, and it's at hubs.mozilla.com spoke. If we get started, we can go to new project and crater. And once we're here, we have this like 3D environment and we can add any sort of media that we want to and it will be built into the scene so no one can change it or edit it once they're in our room. So you can upload your own assets or you can use things from our rock or architecture kit. So just have to drag and drop things in. You've got these rocks. You use these um, like the gizmo to move them around. There's also a link to Sketchfab in here as well, so you can pull in Sketchfab content and um, <clears throat> nice collections and stuff that you can look at, and from Google Poly. Then you click Publish to Hubs, and then they'd be available in your list of scenes to be able to change to. Now, <laughs> once we're in here, I'm, I'm, I didn't publish that one because it would take a few seconds too long, but I can go to choose a scene. Uh, if I go to my scenes, I would see anything that I've published there, but I've also got this list of featured scenes and these have all been um, tested to make sure that they work with multiple users on Quest um, and they're all fairly high quality, these ones. You can also search in our scene database to find others. And <clears throat> 
If you wanted to open one of them up, you just have to click on it and it'll take you into that new environment. So this one is a Parthenon scene. It's really cool. It was made by some researchers um, who had created this 3D model of the Parthenon that uh, you know, it worked on VR headsets, but they wanted to be able to give social tours. And Hubs is really accessible because all you need is a URL to be able to get into it. So they actually um, made it so it was a little bit less um, high, po like they made it so it was a little bit uh, less uh, high resolution and so that you can navigate through it in VR on the web. And so you can kind of come in and explore and get a, a guided tour through this environment, which I think is super, super cool. So this wasn't built inside of um, Spoke, but rather they had a GLB file and they uploaded it into Spoke and set it up there. I'll show you a couple other scenes before I'm done here. So um, we have inside of Spoke uh, an architecture kit, which is for building custom buildings. <laughs> uh, and so there's like 400 pieces in the kit and you can customize the texture that's on them as well. So we'll be in a new environment anytime soon. So here we are inside of this house that we built using the architecture kit. And so we just sort of pieced together the different parts. And um, if you wanted to create your own modified version of it, if you go to room and scene info and you click hubs commons, you'll go to the scene landing page and you'll have an option to be able to remix it there. So if I open that up, I can click remix and spoke and make my own version. Now the last thing I'll show you is an example of one that was uploaded from Sketchfab. Uh, so if I go choose a scene, uh, this is photogrammetry. So this is a really, really beautiful photogrammetry scene that was uploaded by Thomas. It looks really, really awesome. It's a very high detailed scene, so it might take a moment to load. Um, but this is an example of a photogrammetry scene that's been um, optimized for the web and makes for a really cool space to explore um, with other folks. So I don't think I'd want to have 25 people in here at once, but I've definitely had like 10 people without any issues. Now, the last thing I want to do before I take off is I want to show you a bit of the moderation controls when um, other people come in to join you. So I'm going to open up my other computer. One moment. And if I click share, I should be able to invite myself in. So I'll go to hub.link and I'll use that code 9901311. And you will see me, I have a fake name on this other computer, so you'll be able to tell me apart from me. Uh, so here I am coming in as Jim. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> So once I'm in here, I can turn around and I'll see, yeah, here's my gym avatar. And if I wanted to um, change the volume on someone else who's in the room, I just have to point and open up that secondary menu. So once again, that's space if you're on your desktop computer or use the two finger tap on mobile or the A button on Quest. And you can press the plus button or plus sign to make them louder, the minus sign to make them quieter. This is again, only for you. If you wanted to hide them from your own view, you can click hide. Um, and if you're a moderator in the room, so if you're the room owner, you also have the option to mute someone if they've left their mic on, uh, or you can kick them from the space. Um, so I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact that you can control other people's volumes inside of the room as well. And you can see that Jim is now listed in <laughs> the list of people that are inside of our, my space. Okay, so the last thing that I'll say is that if you do have any questions, you can head to hubs.mozilla.com. We have a link there to our documentation site, so maybe your, answer, your question is answered there. If not, you can always email us, hubs at mozilla.com, or you can head to our community Discord, um, which is a really great resource for getting in touch with the team. We also have meetups and office hours offered a few times per week. So you can head there to find out when exactly those are happening. Feel free to reach out to me. I am the only Elgin there. And I look forward to seeing you in VR. <laughs>